First of all, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, could I say all protocols observed? Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank um, Jam Fields uh, for giving me an opportunity to share with the, the country at large and the, the, the audience uh, about EITI. My presentation layout is uh, as shown there. Um, can everybody see this at the back? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll give a brief history of our mining industry. And by mining, I mean in its totality, uh, base metals and, uh, and gemstone industry, and uh, the current setting, uh, the EITI, and uh, what EITI has achieved in Zambia, and uh, how we see the way forward. Now, all of you here, being a mining country, you are aware that uh, we, we've been mining for over 100 years and as a consequence of that Zambia is one of the very few countries in the world that has gone through the full cycle. Uh, at the time of independence we were, our industry was in private hands uh, some years into an independent Zambia we nationalized the mines and the, towards the end of the 90s, we privatized the mines. There are very few countries in the world that have that unique experience. And because we have that unique experience, we are at a level and a stage where we can share with the world what not to do and what to do to grow an industry. And listening to my big brother, Mr. Litana, and their presentation, we are even much better to chart the way forward on how we can uh, create a sustainable base for growing the sector, both for the investor and for the Zambian people. Now, what is EITI? Uh, EITI is simply uh, the acronym, acronym EITI means Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. In simple language, it's about good corporate governance of the natural resources that we have. And the starting point for the concept, we have to start from a perspective of saying that the natural mineral resources that are in Zambia belong to Zambian people. That's a starting point. So God endowed the natural resources in Zambia for Zambian people. Now, in order to get value out of those natural resources, Zambian people must work in partnership with the international investors in order to create wealth. And when we create wealth together, we should have a mechanism for a win-win situation where the investor gets the value of his investment and he's assured of sustainability in the broad sense. He's assured of a, a business and enabling environment. He's assured of stability. In the same vein, the Zambian person must be assured that uh, out of the exploitation of these natural resources, there will be revenue that will go to government and that revenue will be used for national development. And therefore, together we can transform our society uh, from poverty base to high and better standard of living. So the EITI, that's what... <coughs> so, so if we look at uh, the floor diagram there, don't worry. Uh oh, 
how do I point at something I want top, to point? On top, on top. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, don't worry about the compl complexity, but see it in, the, in a simple format. And the simple format is that uh, the top part, uh, just uh, for simplicity, uh, let's focus on tax. That's the simplest thing that government gets. But there are all these various things. But let's talk about tax. Uh, there's tax, companies pay tax, and government receives tax. And what EITI is all about is that uh, companies in, uh, in compliance with the laws of the land will pay tax, and then government will receive tax. And what we do in EITI is to just compare, to say we received so much from, from uh, the mining company, and the government says, yes, we accept. And the whole idea is uh, uh, transparency. And I was so pleased to see uh, in, in just those brief moments when I came in and my brother, state council, when I was uh, giving us a presentation on gem fields, I learned more about gem fields in those few minutes than I knew all these years. Uh, I was very impressed and I would like to thank you for sharing that with us. And for me, with an eye from EITI, uh, I felt uh, what was presented was excellent. Now, in order to do this, we have an oversight by a multi-stakeholder group. And that multi-stakeholder group is government, mining industry, and, and civil society. As simple as that. All about dialogue, all about partnership, all about creating a framework of sustainability. Now, the concept of EITI uh, essentially was developed in the Western world, USA and Europe. And it started in the early 2000 uh, period. And the whole idea was to try and answer the question of the dilemma you have in particular in developing countries where um, vast amounts of resources are paid into government but uh, the population is not very clear on how that money is used. And also, uh, extractive industry by nature is an industry where society will always have suspicion about uh, the mining companies that they make, they need millions of money and they are exploiters, they are capitalists, and they are taking our wealth, they are taking our civil. So this whole idea was, how do we bring that to an end and come up with the, uh, clarity? So, in, um, when I was part of the World Bank Advisory Group in the mid-2000, this concept was being developed in Washington. And I came back home and shared with our colleagues in the government and said, look, I think if we want to attract investment in Zambia, we need to do the kind of things that the world is moving towards. And uh, I'm very pleased that uh, through uh, that initiative, our government was extremely receptive and we set out to, to set up the EITI. So you can see in the... Um, sorry, technology. I'm a bushman, bear with me. I spent so much time in the bush. Um, in 2008, the government announced uh, uh, adherence to EITI principle, and we established a multi-stakeholder group, and we formed the Zambia Extractive Industry Council. Now, the way our council is constituted is the mining companies, the civil society and the, uh, uh, and the government. Now, we have a total membership of six. Now, what is more interesting, I think, for all of us here would be what constitutes civil society. Civil society is basically everybody other than a mining company and government. So, when you get home, uh, even if you are a mining person, when you get home, you become civil society. 
So it's all the citizens of the country. And for us, uh, we, we let the civil society, you know, Zambia has got a, a huge number of civil society groups, and they elected who should to come to this multi stakeholder group. And the, the groups that are in that multi stakeholder group are the, the, the media, we have the media representative, uh, then we have uh, Transparency International, then we have uh, the trade unions, the, 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 mine, uh, the mine trade unions, they are members of, then we have the House of Chiefs, and um, I think those are the, are the main ones. And we have the advocates, like uh, for instance, uh, Caritas, which is a, a Catholic church, uh, uh, and you, um, organization that deals with poverty issues. So you can see we are extremely well represented and we have uh, the House of Parliament, meaning members of Parliament. So, we, and then from mining companies, it's uh, representing from the Chamber and government. In order to demonstrate uh, commitment, uh, the, the process is, is driven by Minister of Finance as the chairperson. And in order to demonstrate neutrality, the, the civil society is the vice chair. And the secretariat sits in the Ministry of Mines because the mines is the custodian of the, the mineral resources. And then we have Minister of Local Government, we have Minister of Justice, and of course we have uh, Zambia Revenue Authority represented, and we have the Bank of Zambia represented. So you can see. It's a, it's a very good uh, uh, com composition. Now, it's uh, not easy to, to, to become compliant with the ITI. There's the processes that you have to go through. So, like I said, we expressed interest in, uh, in 2008. Then uh, we had to produce a work plan, work plan which showed what we will do and uh, in 2009, so in 2009, uh, the country we became a candidate country, and then we had to produce a national report. Now that report is driven by government uh, audited accounts. So because everything that has to be used in the EITI has to be have been audited. So we produced our first report of 2008, 2009, and this year we produced the, the, the 2010. And our goal is to, to come up to date and uh, so that we are current. So we became, in 2012, we became a, a compliant country. Now, I would like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the greatest achievements this country has achieved. Because we are the only country in this part of the world that is EITI compliant. And across the whole world, there are only 35 countries that are compliant. And you'll be shocked to hear, up to now, America is not compliant. <laughs> It's not a compliant country. I've just come back from uh, Australia, where I was invited to share at the Global EITI conference. And the conference was opened by the Prime Minister of Britain by video, and the Minister of Mines for Australia. And Zambia was held as a, a great case uh, to, to share with the world. So, Without having to read all that, it's important to know that we are now get, we are compliant. And the, at the, the conference in, in in Sydney, America announced that uh, they are taking on board EITI. Britain has already taken EITI, and the G8 uh, country G20 are taking that as an integral part of their uh, framework for, 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 uh, for managing resources. Uh, France announced it's going to do the same. 
and even one of the uh, new countries, Timor Leste, uh, one of the, in the prize, uh, and so on. So you can see that uh, going forward, uh, the world, as we know, is a global village, but uh, transparency and accountability on both sides is going to be a cardinal point. <coughs> Now, I've taken from our 209 report, our second report, just to show you. The principle is very simple. It works uh, by, you, you list companies, and I think for the purpose of this, um, uh, this uh, summit, there is a gem field there. Uh, so you list companies that are operating and exploring and then the operating companies and exploration companies and so on. So you can see that uh, in the 2009 report, we have 27 companies. And then we have an issue of materiality. Uh, what level do we want to begin to report at? And we felt uh, the first phases of developing this principle in Zambia, we should deal with the big, big, big companies and we perfect the reporting, and in future, then we can take on board all other companies as we go forward. Now, in terms of government, we, we, our main focal point is the institutions that collect tax in one form or another. So we have the Zambia Revenue Authority being the main one, Minister of Finance, Minister of Lands, and the local councils, in which uh, we have mining operations. And uh, of course, uh, uh, ZCCM. And what are the criteria that uh, we, we, oops, sorry. So here's a list of uh, kind of payments that, uh, uh, for instance, all companies are required to pay annual business fee, property rates, ground rent. There are so many of them. Uh, and one of the issues going forward we, 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 we are looking at is how to simplify things, uh, to simplify all these uh, permits, license fees, and so on, so that uh, we reduce the number, so that it uh, becomes less cumbersome for, for an investor coming into Zambia. But uh, we've done quite well. We've, we used to have a bigger list than this, but uh, it, it has come down. And just to share, this is the amount of tax mining companies uh, paid for the first three years that we've dealt with. So in 2008, you can see uh, mining companies. This is company payments. That's government revenues. You can see almost spot on. Uh, if you take that, that's about just about 500 million, just about there. That's the taxes uh, mining companies paid to government. In 2009, there was a slight increase, uh, just maybe 500 something. But you see, in 2010, we the figure is about, uh, if I take that straight, uh, will be about uh, approximately about seven something, 750 million. Now, this is a very important point, ladies and gentlemen. The importance of mining to the Zambian economy. It's a driver for this economy, and we need to put our heads together to create an investor enabling environment. But at the same time, we must ensure that this value that is being created by mining companies is can be seen, can be tangible into our society. And what uh, other people call the trickle-down effect. We need to see the trickle-down effect. Now, if I give an example for the purpose of this summit, the, uh, the two gemstone companies are in Rufanyama district. It's a total shame if you go to Rufanyama. It's a bush. It's in worse than a village. Now, if we are making so much money and the, a bit of it is reflected in the taxes that we, we pay to government, 
surely we should put our heads together and come up with a, a meaningful uh, contribution and development plan so that Rufanyama becomes a shining example of an emerging city. There was a statement that uh, Zambian Emerald is one of the best in the world, 20% what? But where it comes from, it's bush, it's shack. What does that tell? It doesn't give, put us in a very good picture. So the whole idea for us who are in EITI is how can we marshal our resources and our mindset together and create a base of win-win. And with that base, you will find that Zambians will love us. They will love mining companies because they will associate them as a force for positive transformation. And that's what is important and I think we need to as we move forward. So the tax 2011, we've already looked at the figures, is, uh, is higher than this. But the report is not yet out. We, we shall be getting the report out by by end of the, the year. Now, in order to, to to do all these things we do, we have to disseminate information. Uh, mining industry by nature is very technical and very complex. So our role in the Zambia Extractive Industry Transparency Council is to make these things simple. So we have billboards, like uh, you can see here is an example. Mines paid in Kwacha, 1.74 trillion Kwacha, taxes in 2008. And then we think that would have been enough to build 12,000 kilometers of road network. Those of us who come from the Copper Belt, we are very familiar that uh, most of our areas are yeah, with portal roads. Now, if we are making all that kind of money, surely, wouldn't we be using it for that? And what we did was, uh, for a town like Kitwe, we had a big poster to say, for argument's sake, Mopani paid so much tax to central government, paid so much tax to Kitwe City Council. So Rezi, first quantum paid so much, and so on. And what we are driving at, and we have radio programs, whenever we, we do the launch, we have radio programs to educate the nation, to say how much money went in, uh, was put in the economy by the mining industry. Now, that has got in its own uh, very positive uh, 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 elements. And the, here I'm, I'm, I'm stating what we have achieved. We have achieved, we've written three national reports, now we're working on this, and the next year will be current, given now that the government has, uh, has changed the financial year, it's now like a calendar year. So it's going to be easier to, to get the reports done. But we always have to wait for the Auditor General to sign off the accounts of the government Dissemination uh, of information countrywide has been achieved. Uh, last year, we even published our little pamphlets on EITI in the local language. And we had the clear shot, the clear shot from the, air, the, the, the chairperson of EITI from Oslo, Norway, Fred Secretariat. She came over and we launched that in Sorezi. And the, we produced that document in Kaonde. It was the first uh, book I read in Kaonde, you know, uh, thanks to EITI. I wonder if you understood it. It's very similar to Bemba, so since we are the same, so I did. Uh, and we feel it's work in progress, so we feel there's a growing better understanding of mining industry by society. Uh, but more important, I think, is the fact that uh, the EITI process is, is, is deepening economic democracy in Zambia. And I'd like to spend a little bit, a few minutes on that. What do I mean that EITI is deepening democracy in Zambia? For the first time, we are having an informed debate. Because now, people will know, Jeff Fields paid so much tax to Rufanyama district. 
Grizzly paid so much tax to Lufanyama district. Now, for argument's sake, I don't know how much tax the two companies have paid to Lufanyama. Purely hypothetical. In, in the event that you paid $2 million, $3 million to Lufanyama, it would mean the people in Lufanyama district can go to the council and say, look, you got $2 million from gem fields. What have you used it for? You see, that's what I mean. At national level, we can have the same debate. If mining companies are pumping so much money in the economy, how are we using this money to transform this society? Because at the end of the day, it's all about uh, poverty alleviation and uh, giving a better life standard to our people in Zambia. It's not that we love stones. Some of us, my whole life is mining. It's not that I love copper, I love emeralds and what. I love them because they create money. And money is required to transform society. That's the underlying principle. And that's why I'm saying it's going to, and it's helping us, deepening our economic democracy. And if you've noticed now, when people talk about mining, they don't talk the way they used to talk before. They now have got figures, whether it's the, 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 the government, whether it's opposition party, whether it's NGO, whether it's what. We have figures, and we want our people in Zambia to be a well-informed group. Now, like any process that is transformation in nature, it comes with challenges. And uh, some of the key challenges are we have to manage expectations. We have to manage the expectations. And what are the expectations? If I give an example, my big brother, Mr. Etan, was saying, Zambians have got licenses, and they see one side catching, they see one side grizzly, and they are saying, I should also have that $15 million. Now, that $15 million can be an illusion, because as the Mr. Claude was talking about here in front, there's a lot that one has to do before that 15 million appears. So it's giving us a platform to deal with reality. And what are those realities? The realities is that if I talk about what we are discussing today, the gemstone industry, so many people have got licenses, but those are prospecting licenses. And by definition, for me, being a geologist, is that uh, you go and prospect. And uh, the kind of things we are talking about, we need to have the geological knowledge, and you can hire the geological knowledge. There's my brother there, Nandu, who is a geologist who a lot of you use, and many other. So we need to learn that process. And if I may just give you an example, I have been doing exploration myself, Wapula province. This is my fourth year in the bush. That's why I'm rarely seen in town. It has taken me four years. Up to now, I don't have a nobody. Four years of sleeping in, in bush, in a tent, and I'm continuing. Why? Because by nature, we geologists, we are optimists. We always believe it will happen. When, we don't know, but we keep on working at it. Now, if things go well, this year I'll be able to drill and define the reserve. Next year I'll be able to do some back of feasibility studies. And thereafter, I'll be able to go in the open market to raise finance because I have an asset which people with money may be attracted to. And if they are, then we'll develop a mine. But it would have taken me not less than five, six, seven years to get to that dream. Now, that's what we have to work on as a people. The other challenge we have, how do we get this, this uh, God's endowment to grow? That's the biggest uh, challenge we have. How do we get the industry to grow and so that it contributes its fair share of taxes towards sustainable national economic development? I'm sure all of you, uh, fellow Zambians, you've seen what is going on in the papers. And those of our colleagues who have come from overseas, 
There's a big debate in Zambia now, which is saying that uh, the country believes that it's not getting fair taxes from the mining industry. Yes. So that's a challenge. Now, if we believe that, we have to sit around and uh, come up with mechanisms that would make an investor invest and grow, that will make an investor feel comfortable being in Zambia because there's huge competition for investment across the world. And somebody in that debate talked about it's capitalism. Capitalism has no emotions. It's, it's inanimate. It has no feelings. It doesn't laugh, it doesn't cry. It just does things. So how do we manage this uh, uh, animal called capitalism? But Zambian people are very good people. We are very good people. We are very understanding people. We are very re resilient people. And the investors that have come to Zambia is because they love Zambia. Love meaning they love our natural resources. They don't love us as people, but they love the natural resources. <laughs> So, given that we have that side symbiotic relationship, mm -hmm. it means we can sit down and say, what is good for the investor? And then, what is good for Zambia? And putting our heads together, we will come up with a win-win situation. And that's what EITI is. And one thing I'd like to share is that uh, as EITI, we would like to use uh, the gemstone industry as an example. And this is why I'm very grateful uh, to, to, to Gemfield for having taken this initiative. I think we have an excellent opportunity to make a change. A change where Zambia will be proud to talk about its own emeralds. And a change which will make Gemfield, as an example at Grizzly, one of the biggest gemstone companies in the world. What's the way forward? Of course, this is administrative. We are working to become current, and we will. To continue disseminating information, because this is work in progress, and it will continue to be work in progress. And how do we deal, putting our heads together? How do we ensure that the profits we make can be seen visibly in the local areas where we are so that we are not just a misfit. Where we are mining, there should be things shining. People should live in modern housing, modern hospitals, modern schools, plenty of food. You know, I know a lot of us here are very spiritual. So I can uh, give an example. Similar to what we are taught in the Bible, paradise. We can create paradise in Zambia, but it takes two minds to get together. The investor and the society at large and the government. Uh, here, I was just showing how committed the Zambian government is. Each time we have a a report is launched by the minister. So here we have the minister, honorable minister, I am from Kanga, launching the, the EITI report, which we did. What's the conclusion, if there is any ever a conclusion? This is just purely for presentation purposes. Matters of human nature, there are no conclusions. But I thought in order to get to the end of my presentation, uh, I should share that uh, EITI process has anchored and strengthened transparency and accountability in the mining industry in Zambia. It has enabled the consolidation of the investor-friendly environment in the country and has embedded economic democracy in the country and created a platform upon which we can debate. That in itself is a major achievement. And to have differences of opinion is very healthy. 
And that's one good thing we as Zambians we are good. That's why over all the years of our independence, we've never had a civil war. We are very good people. We are ready to talk, to listen. But as we listen, we don't want people to take advantage of our good listening habits. So let's put ourselves together and chat the way and have a win-win situation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.